Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I haven't made a video over here in quite some time. I have taken a little bit of a break because I am catching up on the Oscar nominated movies for this year. Um, I shared this in my vlog and I shared it on my drama channel, but I might as well share it over, might as well. I should also share it over here as well. Um, you know, it was something that my mom and I used to do back in the day was watch the movies for the Oscars and then watch the Oscars. It was something that I loved. And this year I've been thinking a lot about my mom and um, I don't know, it's, it's weird. You know, this year is going to be 15 years since my mom has passed and I've just been thinking a lot about her lately. And so when I realized that the Oscars were this upcoming Sunday, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to try to watch all of the movies that are nominated for the main categories like you know, best picture, best actor, best actress, best supporting actor, best supporting actress, on and on, best director, you know, all of that um, for this year. And so that's what I've been attempting to do. The problem is I've been staying up very, very late at night. And so I have been super tired and um, getting up later than usual and then not feeling super motivated to film, you know, videos. Or I've had to, you know, get ready really quickly because I had certain things to do. Like Monday night we had marriage counseling and last night I had my meeting. So... I'm slowly getting back into the swing of things, and today I have already filmed a drama video, a Peter Dusta video, this video. Um, I'm going to try to do my booktube video, and then I'm going to be filming a vlog. So we're getting back into the swing of things, you know. But I have to say, um, I'm really happy that I did this, you know. I, I talked about this on my vlog yesterday, but I'm going to talk about it over here too because I think it's a good, it's a valuable lesson in life, you know, that I... Um, it's these kinds of things that I often, like, <clears throat> I don't even know how to explain it. It's, I, I don't do, but these are the things that when I do do them, like taking off time to watch three movies in a row in a night or whatever, you know, every night of the week to get ready for the Oscars, that those are the moments in my life that I look back on and I think, gosh, like, that was a really fun week or I'm so happy that I did that or that really, you know, reminded me of my mom and I'm really happy that I did it and I'm really happy that I've taken the time this week to do it, you know? Um, and I think that one of the things that I've learned today, I actually did not do that last night. I came home from my meeting and I ate and then I was like in bed by like 11 o'clock and I went to bed pretty early last well 11 o'clock I was in bed and so but what I've learned is that I can do those things and then I can also you know be productive as well with other areas of my life so but I'm back I'm back to filming videos over here and I missed you guys so Let's get into the meditations for today. I brought the two Melody Baby books. I haven't looked at them at all, so I have no idea what they may say. Today is March 8th. I think today's March 8th, I'm almost positive. Let's see what the meditation is for March 8th in the language of letting go. Okay, oh, surrender, this will be a good one. Uh, let's actually just not even look at this one yet. Let's just read from this one and talk about surrender. It's, so, it's interesting, um, and it's going to reference the third step in here in just a second. But what's interesting about, I feel like, I feel like my mom's spirit is just like so around me right now. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why it is, but I also don't know why I feel, I mean, I feel that way on many different levels. But the night that my mom passed away, um, you know, I, I, so one of my friends, I said to her, can you, she was holding my mom's hand and I said, can you say the serenity prayer to her? And she said out loud. And I said, yes, out loud. And she started and I said, actually, can you say the third step prayer to her? And so the third step prayer is about surrender. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And so my friend, um, who also knew my mom, she held my mom's hand and we were all surrounding my mom and she started reading the third step prayer and she got almost towards the end of it, like halfway through, and my mom just like passed and flatlined. When I went to my mom's house later that night, and I was looking for her like her 12-step uh, book and her Bible and things like that, and I opened her 12-step book, she had it like, you know, penciled and things like dog-eared. My mom had it, you know, really like, been used. she'd really used her books through the years. But the only thing that was highlighted in her entire book was the third step prayer, which was about surrender. And that friend of mine, she ended up reading the third step prayer um, at my mom's funeral because it just, it meant so much to me and this whole idea of surrendering. So it's kind of, I don't know, it's weird that this, this is coming up today in a meditation. Let's read this. Surrender, 
made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Step three of Al-Anon. Surrendering to a power greater than ourselves is how we become empowered. We become empowered in a new, better, more effective way than we believed possible. Doors open, windows open, possibilities occur. Our energy becomes channeled, at least, in areas and ways that work for us. We become in tune with the plan for our life and our place in the universe. And there is a plan and a place for us. We shall see that. We shall know that. The, the universe will open up and make a special place for us with all that we need provided. It will be good. Understand that it is good now. Learning to own our power will come if we are open to it. We do not need to stop at powerlessness and helplessness. That is a temporary place where we reevaluate where we have been trying to have power when we have none. Once we surrender, it is time to become empowered. Let the power come naturally. It is there. It is ours. Today I will be open to understanding what it means to own my power. I will accept powerlessness where I have no power. I will also accept the power that is mine to receive. You know, it's interesting when we talk about the third step and... Um, you know, the second step is came to believe that a power, than my, a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. And the third step is made a decision to turn my life and my will over to the care of God as I understood him. It doesn't say anything about drugs or alcohol in the third step. You know, it says my life and my will. And that was something that I really, really struggled with in early sobriety was this idea, first of all, I really struggled with the second step of coming up with this power greater than myself, you know, of really trusting in that. And I recently shared some stories on here about the difference between belief and faith and how that has been a really valuable lesson that I've learned just in the last year. Um, and it's been something that I've been learning for the last couple years, but really just in the last year, you know. And um, I, I think it's... <sighs> I think the, you know, my, my friend Tanya always says that the road to spirituality narrows as you get older. And I really believe that to be true. Um, I, I've, I've met very few people in my life that I feel like have a very pure vision of a all knowing higher power that is peaceful, serene, and all loving, and that they don't use it to weaponize against other people. Like I've only known a few people like that, right? Like it's a very private relationship that they have. And, um, they're not preachy and whatever and I admire that and I respect that and I think you know and even though I'm making videos about it that's to some degree uh who I want to be um I guess more in my personal life but you know when I got sober I really struggled with this idea of uh, power greater than myself and our text tells us God either is or he isn't and I can remember in like you know struggling with this my sponsor said to me like he kind of like threw down the book and he goes God either is or he is and I was like yes he is you know because I was just like ready to move on but it wasn't really until like two years sober that I went on this like spiritual journey. And I've talked a lot about this on my vlog. And I started really reading a lot of uh, spiritual, even some religious text. And, um, you know, one of the, so where it started for me was, I'm not going to get into the, I'm not going to get into the whole story of all of this, but um, my sponsor said to me, I think that we need to start with fear. And so I said, he goes, because I think that a lot of like spirituality is based in fear, you know? And I said, okay. And he said, <clears throat> what's your greatest fear? And I said, my greatest fear is death. He said, okay, so I want you to find a book that's going to help you deal with f your fear of death. But from a spiritual point of view, like it has to be some kind of spiritual study. And I, when I look back on this, I think it's so funny, but it really helped me at the time. And so I really needed like a, uh, a visual understanding of an afterlife. And so around that time, I don't know when, but Sylvia Brown's book, uh, To the Other Side and Back or something like that came out. And um, so I read her book. So if you don't know who Sylvia Brown is, she was this psychic that used to be on Montel Williams. And, um, and I've always been a, a, a person that, I don't know that I necessarily believe in all of them, but I've wanted to, like I, I've wanted to believe in signs from the other side. Um, and so I read this book and there were a lot of things in this book that made sense to me, you know, when it talked about deja vu and it talked about how you work with a group of spirits on the other side and you have, you know, this like soul partner that you design this, this, uh, it, uh, like blueprint for your life and there's lessons that you're going to learn and then like when you're exactly at that moment like you could go off on this blueprint and do your own thing but sometimes you like come back on the road on your blueprint and you're exactly where you're supposed to be and at that moment it's deja vu because it reminds you of like this blueprint that you made 
Now all of these different things that she said in there like made a lot of sense to me. I was devastated years later when um, my ex and I were watching, we used to watch her on, I think it was, she was on Montel, yeah. We, we were watching Montel and she was proven to be a complete fake, but I was devastated. I was absolutely devastated. But really what that book did for me was it, um, it really helped me get on this course of reading a lot of like spiritual uh, manuals and spiritual texts, including the Bible. Um, and, you know, and, and I had gone to Sunday school and read all of that. And, you know, but it also, I mean, I read a lot of different things from a lot of different um you know, religious backgrounds, um, you know, whether it was like mysticism, like Kabbalism, all the way to Native American wisdom, you know, to Hinduism and Buddhism, on and on and on. I went to Christianity. I learned, you know, a lot about all different things. And the thing that I found was that the majority of all of these world religions mostly have love, kindness, compassion, understanding, um, and forgiveness as their core tenets. And that is where I kind of like took this over all understanding of if there is a higher power out there, I believe that he, she, it, whatever, that's what their core tenets are. And that's how I try to live today. Um, and so, you know, I think for me, it's about all of that and surrendering into that. It's almost kind of like trust falling into love, compassion, kindness, understanding, hope, maybe, you know, and forgiveness. And I think sometimes forgiveness is the most difficult of all. Um, and wanting to be that person and wanting to be the best version. And that's for me when people say, well, what does that mean? What do you mean when you say being the best version of yourself? Well, defined by those words, being compassionate, being kind, being understanding, being forgiving, being hopeful, you know, being helpful, being of service. That's what I mean by being the best version of myself, you know? So anyway, um, interesting meditation today talking about surrender and, um, I also love this story that Oprah told. Oprah wanted a part in The Color Purple so bad she was in love with that movie. And so she would hand out the book to everybody that would read it. And she didn't care if she was just like doing... If there's, a, there's a clip on um, YouTube where you can see her talking about it. And um, she just wanted a part. And she had auditioned for it. And so she was you know, regularly calling like her, uh, what do you call it? Her, um, agent and saying like, you know, have they cast it yet? Have they cast it yet? And so the last time that she called, she called her agent and her agent said, you know, Oprah, like there are real actresses that like Loretta, you know, Divine, I think is her name and other people that are auditioning for this role, like real serious actresses that have been around a lot longer than you have that are auditioning for this role. And, um, but we'll let you know when we know something. So Oprah was like, okay. So she went to this weight loss camp and, um, she just kind of like gave up hope that she was going to get this role. And she was like walking on the track or running around the track or something like that. And her assistant came out to her and she said, um, her assistant said, Steven Spielberg is on the phone. And so she went out and she took the call and Steven Spielberg said to her, I heard that you're at a weight loss uh, camp program. If you lose one pound, um, oh no, she said she got on, she was walking around the tread, walking around, she was on a treadmill or she was walking around the, 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 the doing laps and she said, okay God, this is obviously not what you have planned for me. This is obviously like, this is not what you have planned for me to play this role. So whatever it is, that you have planned for me, I I'm there. And she started singing the gospel song, which I absolutely love. And every time I hear it, it just gives me chills, which is I surrender all. And she started singing that I surrender all. And um, her assistant came out and said that Steven Spielberg was on the phone. And she said um, that he said, if you lose one pound, the part's not yours. And on the way home, she stopped at Dairy Queen and got a blizzard, you know? And um, I think about that, you know, I think for me, it took a really long time to get behind this, this idea of something bigger than myself that had a bigger plan than me. Um, and I'm not going to say that it's always easy and I still struggle with it a lot when I, you know, I just, I just don't get why things happen in this world the way that they happen. Um, but I do know that if there is something out there, it has to come from that, that place. Um, of kindness, love, compassion, understanding. I hope, I hope. 
And so that's what I try to surrender into every day and, and, and be the best version of that that I possibly can be. So anyway, let me know what you think about that in the comment section below about that meditation. It was a good meditation today. And um, I'm so happy to be back. I missed you guys. I love you and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.